Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kao Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Now we're going back to the seedfulness of riches. I just laid that as a foundation. And that's why Paul said, I planted, Apollo watered, God gave the increase. In Luke 12, the Bible says the rich fool had great increase. So God gave him the increase. That's, you see another reason why God denies people. Then he said to his soul, said, I have stalked for many years. And I'll say to my soul, eat. Solomon said in his Ecclesiastes, he said, when profit increases, he said, the mouth that eats it increases. That's what the Bible says. When you are supposed to be giving five, five million, then suddenly God turns the tide and turns it to 50 million. What it simply means is that he has added the mouth to feed from it. Then the man said, I will say to my soul alone for this thing. And God said, no, you will not eat from me tonight. You are going and you are a dead man. And he died that night. So that's another reason why I don't want to go into that. Why God denies and allows, that's not the message for today. But you understand God, his thinking and his operation. There's nothing blanket. Everything is plain in the scripture. You can know what next. You can predict God. You can tell what will happen next. When people entered the, the ship and they said, Sir, there are no life racks. He said, we don't need life rack. This ship cannot sink. Not even God can say, you should know that ship is going to sink. You don't need story. You don't need prophecy. There are things you should know. That ship will what? Sink. Just get out quickly. Nobody needs to tell you that that ship is going to sink. Amen? Amen. There are so many things. You do. It's all by principles and it's all set in the word of God. You can know. Praise God. That's why they say his ways are revealed. You can know. They, someone says his ways are mysterious. Telling you are in the 12th century. God's ways are not mysterious. They are revealed. The Bible says he revealed his ways to Moses. A few things is important for you to know about riches. Number one, you can be very rich physically. And that's why they say rich people are not those who have a lot of cash. Most very, very rich people from God, don't have much cash, really. What they have are assets, plenty of assets that generate income. That's why in the parable of the talent, he gave talents five to one, two to another, one to another. And then when he came to take reckoning of the investment, you know, God is a business-minded God. Sorry, he's a prophet. He said, I'm the Lord that teaches thee to profit. One came and said, I've gained five more talents. Said he commended him. The other one said, I've gained another. Comm-. Then one said, Lord, I hid your talent. I was scared. And here is your investment. Now, let's be honest. If you gave somebody 100 million and you came back to say, can I have my money? And he's telling his story. You first get scared. You know how things are said? No, 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 no. What's the problem? Ah, things look. If you know what happened. You know that man. His own 200 million went down to this. Eh, what happened to my 100 million? They said, I was able to salvage your 100 million. I said, praise God, give me back my money. That's what you say. God said, no, take him and put him into darkness for returning my investment without profit. That means he's a profit-minded God. And that means he's an investment pro. Then he told the man, if you didn't know where to invest money, why don't you fix it? So that my coming, I will have interest. But to leave it like that in the bank, he said, we'll collect it back from you. So actually, if you put money in the bank and you're not investing in it, God is going to take it back from you. He will take it. If you load cash in the house, he's coming to take it. It must be invested. If you understand the parable of um, um, the four ways a believer can be lost, parable of the lost sheep, the lost brother, the lost coin, and um, the the prodigal son and the brother. It says, it gave them four ways a believer can be lost. One is about money. He said, lost sheep. Once a sheep stops hearing the shepherd, it gets lost. Any believer that can't discern the leading of the Holy Spirit is actually lost without knowing. Because no sheep is trained to navigate life by itself. It must have a shepherd it's following. And no human being 
is created to navigate life of its own. It must have a spiritual power submitting to either God or Satan. You say, me, I'm a free thinker. They are just living on a treadmill. <laughs> it's just the mercy of God. Now, the second word, the lost coin. Now, the lost coin fell from the shelf. When a coin is on the shelf, it's in circulation, meaning it's being used for goods and exchange of goods and services, right? By falling on the floor means it went out of circulation, right? Either for services as a human being or for monetary investment. So money stored with no investment portfolio attached to it is actually lost. But the world doesn't see that way. Hey! But boy has 200 million cash. He's a poor man. In the eyes of God, he's a poor man. Stored just there. He's a poor man. That's the deceitfulness. Of, it's a wrong teaching on riches. He's poor. That's in the eyes of God. And you see why he's poor. Glory. Somebody say amen. Amen. <coughs> Say amen. amen. Also round up an introduction. So so a person can be rich physically, materially, and be very poor towards God. That's the story we saw in Luke 12. And usually it's because they don't have forms of investments. Because money is a very unstable commodity. Very, very unstable. The Bible says it can develop wings and fly. In Luke 12, we hear the story of the rich fool from verse 16 to 21. I don't want to go into it. Verse 16 to 21 it was a rich fool. And then Verse 16, I have to go into his book of Bible unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. That's so much. He thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. He said, This will I do. I'll pull down my bands, build greater. There will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. I'll say to my soul, So that has much good. You now I was studying this man, and I found the seven sins of this man. Why God took his life. With all the financial breakthrough he had, God took his life. He had about seven sins. Because he didn't give God his due. He kept all to himself. He says, so that has much good lists up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this night your soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which you have provided? So one of the things that God got angry you know, sometimes when you're studying something and you don't know why it happened, you can look at a few statements of why the person acted. For example, a man says, I don't want, um, I don't want to do this job again. You're wondering, what's the problem? Then he'll make a statement. I can't do this kind of job. They just toy from morning to night and they pay you peanuts. You already know why he's leaving the job. He's not satisfied with the pay pack. So most of the time, when they lodge the complaint, they usually tell you why they're complaining immediately after they've lodged the complaint. You may not pick it immediately, but you say, so for God said, you fool, your soul is required tonight. Now we can know why God got angry. Then we shall see who will own those things. So that means that God is angry that he has, let me use the word, diced his own portion with his portion in the Partnership they did. He has put everything to himself. God said, okay. You know, when people, two people do a partnership, and it's maybe 40, 60, when you bring the profit, you share. Then he now takes all the profit to himself. You've heard of them. They said assassin. Say, so, okay, when I send the assassin, we will see who will enjoy the 60 you have kept. Are you getting what we're saying? That's what God said. When I take your life, we will see who will take that portion you have kept. Meaning, he took God's portion to himself. That's the second sin. The first sin was that he refused to increase the mouth. The Bible says when prosperity increases, the mouth that eats increases. Not that you alone increases. He said the mouth that eats, and that's what the Bible says. I think I need to show you where that is. Ecclesiastes 5.11. Let me bring it up. 
when goods increase, they are increased that eat them. So, <clears throat> what good is the owner thereof, saving the beholding of them with their eyes? So, if he increases, and you don't allow it to get to those for whom they've increased, God will take that life out straight. That's why we call it deceitfulness of riches. It's not for you alone. But when people don't know, people not knowing has increased blessings and have cut their life short. Bam! Because, and it was God that cut it short, not Satan. It was God. Not Satan. So you must understand. They say, yeah, you're now 200 million richer than <laughs> It's not just to just throw party. Oh, God. More mouths to feed. That's what it means. Um, Proverbs 13, 7. And I read, There is he that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is he that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. So, you can assess a man by his financial status. A man may have a lot of cash, but is poor towards God. If you remember in Luke 12, it says, So shall it be to he that is poor towards God. That rich man was poor towards God. What makes a man poor towards God? That's another day. So he was poor, though had riches. So there are people who have a lot of cash. They are wretched. There are people who don't have much cash. They are rich. Actually, Poverty is not a state, it's not a financial state. It's a spiritual state that walks through the mind of a person. That's why they say that in, uh, 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 concerning poverty. So there's he that giveth, yet makes more. There's he that with more than his need, it tends to what? Poverty. So a person can be under the yoke of poverty. And that's why you see as they make money, they're either spending on sickness, one accident today, fire tomorrow, it never ends. It never ends. God does not give them the grace to enjoy it. So he allows Satan to take his due. Trust Satan. Oh, Jesus Christ. May Satan never be allowed to partake of your finances. In the, you know how he, he doesn't come to say, give me money. He doesn't, no, 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 no. He uses sickness, diseases, fire. Accidents. All manner of evil. That's how it takes money. But as the Lord keeps you, he will keep your health. Amen. He will keep your finances Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. In the book of Daniel, as I close this number one, the Bible says, Kik Belshasha had cups of gold to drink wine. Is that a poor man or a rich man? A man drinking wine with gold. When a hand showed on the wall, many, many take care of passing. Say, so you have been weighed and they found you to be in debit. Your account is debit. That's a man drinking wine with gold. They say, we weighed you. You lack substance. You are in debit. You are in red. Hmm. Yeah. That's what they told him. He said, oh, God, you are in red. And he was drinking wine with gold cup. Don't envy a man with cash. Envy a man that has the work of his hands that can generate money. That's what you envy. Envy skills. Solomon, by wisdom, raised funds. The Bible says the queen of Sheba came, and as many people came from the nations of the world, they were given towards his wisdom. That's what, that is what they call wealth. Satan gives riches with sorrow. God gives enduring riches called wealth. He gives you, that's why they say it's enduring riches. Why? He will give you the skill and the oppression 
to generate money. So even that money, if they come with a government policy and they devalue and turn everything, you will begin to generate again and again and again and again. It gives you that operation to generate money. The Satan that loads you money, bow, with no oppression. That's a poor man. God doesn't give cash. He gives you the wisdom to navigate and generate services that people have no choice but to buy and get money. We'll come to that. So quiet, oh Jesus. I guess I'll just bring one more point. They say money is very unstable. It's one of the most unstable commodity. Proverbs 8, 18. I ask myself, you mean wrong teaching can stop him? Oh, yes, we've seen it. Wrong teaching. Ask the man once, let's see, Proverbs 8, 18. Riches and honor with me, durable riches and righteousness. So God gives what? Durable riches. Who is talking? Wisdom. So how does God give durable riches? He gives you wisdom. He gives you what? Wisdom. Then he gives you enduring riches. He gives you an operation, a skill, a, a, a process to solve a problem that can never end. So as long as you're on earth and that crisis is on earth, you keep making money. Dad is a rich man. But you know in society, we don't consider that one as a rich man. He drives a race. Oh, heavy car. Oh, did you see that range? My God. It's called M Vogue ETG. Babao. You hail him. Then the one that has the like a holy and bezalia, whom he has anointed, the one that has the skill that is still building up. See that one. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. I will have to stop. I, I'll continue. I just looked at one point. If I would not looked at any point, I'm just doing the introduction, right? Like one part, it says strong men retain riches. Yeah. See, an emotional person, they can't be rich. And if they reach it, if they are rich, it won't last. See, an emotional person, they, eh, I say, so they can't make money. It's not for the weaklings. Did you hear me? I like a Yoruba say, say, no, no, no. <laughs> Do you know what that means? Ah. The money is in the mouth of where the lion is for the brave and for the strong. What does it mean to, for the brave and the strong? You will take tough decisions to retain money. Sometimes it looks callous. Sometimes it looks mean and wicked. A young man came to meet me. I had about maybe 3,000 in my pocket or so. I said, Pastor, it's very good as I've seen you. I've not eaten for three days. As you spoke, as you are talking, I'm smelling cigarettes. So I've not eaten for three days. He was looking lean. He was what? Looking lean. Hey, emotional. Can't. What's this? Is emotional? They can't last. You give them 20 million. They'll be broke. In, in a matter of months, they'll be broke. They'll be broke. They won't make money very well. So as I'm seeing, I've not eaten. I could smell cigarette and ogogoro. So as, 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 as I told you, as, as you see me, so cow. <laughs> Nothing for you. You know, I went to play lawn tennis. I said, you know, it's tennis I came to play. And if I need water, you know, uh, Shola will buy water for me, you know. Pastor, you know, as you deal like this, a big man. <laughs> I said, i am be big man. Ah, you be big man now. Ah, can you move around? No money. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm not lying. So I'm very careful what I was saying because if I say I don't have, that means I'm telling a lie. I said, cow as I did so. No teacher, child for you. As I, as you see me head to toe like this, cow! You know, I didn't say I don't have money because my side didn't have money. I'd have told him, I may give you to go and buy gin. 
Even if I pluck it on the tree, if I give you to buy gin, God will say you are not fit to keep money. You are a worthless investor. God. Plunging money down the drain. He was looking hungry. I won't give you. That's why they say strong men retain. We'll get there. Strong men retain. It's not for boys. Ah, you know, I just look at him. I have a boy. You. I say, you give me the you drive past. You see him smoking. <clears throat> I try to look for the burden on the man. If it's from the Lord, I will help to carry it. Sorry, it's from the Lord. I leave him to carry it. He said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. If it's from Satan, I know it will destroy him, so I help him to carry it. Galatians makes it clear. Say, bear ye one another's burden. Then that's Galatians 6.2. Then 6.6 6 says, let every man bear his burden. So I check the burden. That's, I need just 2,000 and I have 10,000. I check. That burden is from the Lord. I lie. You walk. Hmm. Does that not look mean? They're the ones that retain riches. We say, I'm going to help the burden of the Lord, the Lord said, it's okay. If you won't allow people to carry my burden, you say, I'll block the finances. They will cut him off straight. But if it's from Satan, you must help him. A strong man. The Lord will make you strong. Amen. Strong physically. Healthy. Strong emotionally. Your mind and your soul sound Sound, sound in the name of Jesus. Yeah. The Lord needs everything, you drop it. If he needs, he says, no. I once went to a meeting. And man said, drop this amount. And I brought it out and the Lord said, nope. I read, I said, thank you, Lord Jesus. We're looking at it, so you can. <laughs> I was in front Say, don't do it. So I'm not here. He told me I'll show you where to take it to. Can a non sentimental person do that? That's why they don't get rich. I want to pray. You know, it's just an introduction, but I still want to pray. You need breakthroughs. Or you don't think you do? Year 2000, he appeared to me and said, I commission you to break the spirit of poverty over the continent of Africa. And in that vision, he said, there's more money in Africa than the whole world put together. So Africa is richer than the whole world put together. He said, but the wealth of Africa is hidden. Nobody knows where it is. He said, but we'll show you where it is. In that vision, he said, don't ever look to Europe or America, or sustenance. All you will need in your entire life is in Africa. And there's always a the start a ministry in U.S. <laughs> I dare not. No. And I found out that one or two times in my life, I've helped people with mortgage in America by blessing them from Nigeria. Now, how is this supposed to be? People in Nigeria, Abby, then they send from America to aid you. I have sent from Nigeria to bail out somebody in America. And you can do it. You know, there are certain people that can do it. It's not everybody that can do that. When you are blessed, you can do it. May the Lord make a way for you. Amen. Where there is no way. Amen. May he make a way for you. Amen. Where there is no way. Amen. May he bless the work of your hands. Amen. Prosper the work of your hands Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. May he put you into the hearts of men of stature, carriers of your peace. Amen. May they seek you and find you. Amen. May they bring to you to worship at your feet Amen. all that God has given them for your care Amen. in the name of Jesus. He said, I have sent you to reap where you did not sow. Others have labored, but you have entered into their labor. You will enter into the labor of your enemies. 
you will enter into the labor of them that hate you. In the name of Jesus, I command money, that spirit to rise and begin to pursue you. Let it follow you. Let it answer to you. In the name of Jesus, let it deliver to you all the wants and all the needs that money is to answer in your life. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy you will not be stranded at any given time. In the name of Jesus. Once I was broke and I didn't have a dime. 1 a.m. I said, what is this? The Lord said, step out to the balcony. I stepped out. He said, call for the money. I said, dollars, pounds, euros, naira. Everywhere you are in the four corners of the earth, locate me and find me and answer to me. In Jesus, in 24 hours, I was blessing somebody with $100. He said, you gave me $100. I said, yes. But money won't control you. Money will be your slave. Yeah. It will not be your master. Yeah. You know it's a spirit. And it wants to rule over you. That's why you see when a man doesn't have money, it's like this. It is well. It is well. When you ask me, I say, praise God. Hey, boys, how are you? Money is ruling him already. His countenance has changed. His soul has changed. Money is his God. He say, hey. Say, madam, I've been on the queue. What's the meaning of this? How much is this whole supermarket? Times three. Tell me the price. That's money. <laughs> you, you will have that confidence without money. The money will answer to that confidence. In the name of Jesus. But when you didn't have money, say, ah, ah, hey, this one, you are just jumping queue. It is well, oh. Now I'm not sure I'm going to come here again. That's how they talk when they don't have money. When they have money, say, madam, how much is this supermarket worth? Okay, times three of it, times another two. Add three million. What's the bill? My boys, attend to her. It's been dominated by that spirit. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again, same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.